Hello. Are you guys ready to reduce some ketones and aldehydes? What? <laughs> yep. Calm down, though. So by now, you guys probably already know how to attack the carbonyl, which is just the carbon-oxygen that's double-bonded in your aldehydes, that part, and in your ketones as well, right over here. You guys have probably already learned how to use each of these to react with your ketones and aldehydes. Um, Greenyards, right, they have a nucleophilic carbon right here that can target the electron-deficient carbons of your carbonyls, which are in your ketones and aldehydes. Um, phosphonium ilids, right, they work in the Wittig reaction. This carbon over here that's, that's nucleophilic can target, once again, these two areas that are electron deficient and create alkenes in the Wittig reaction. Alcohols, and more specifically, the oxygen is going to be the nucleophile in, in those reactions. They can attack, once again, at those two positions and create hemiacetals, acetals, and even cyclic acetals, which are pretty cool protecting groups. Amines can also be used uh, to react with ketones and aldehydes, um, that, and more specifically the nitrogen, right? It's nucleophilic, it could target those two um, areas once again, and create imines and enamines, which are kind of cool too, and very similar to, um, the mechanism to create them are very similar to um, acetals. So yeah, if you guys need help with uh, any of these reactions or reaction mechanisms, I have included the links down below in my description box. You guys can just check that out. I haven't done the green yards yet, but if you guys like me to do it, then just give me a heads up and I'll do it when I have some free time. But anyways, let's say if you guys don't want to react with ketones or aldehydes because you're sick of tired, you're sick and tired of reacting them with green yards, illids, alcohols, and amines, then what you can do is use reducing agents. This is where they come really where they come where they're really handy and useful. Because let's say if you want to turn your ketone or aldehyde into an alcohol, which you guys pro probably and hopefully learned um, about in your first midterm or earlier in, in um, Organic 2. And um, let's see, yeah, so the next question that, that we come across is, what the heck is a reducing agent, right? So the way I just think about reducing agents is a chemical that has some property that allows it to reduce the number of triple bonds or, or double bonds in your molecules, okay? Now I know that's not the textbook definition, um, but it works for me, and if you want to keep things simple, it's worked for me um, as, a, as a student and a tutor for organic chem. So, yeah, if you guys want to keep things simple, you can think about it that way, or you can stick with the textbook definition. But, um, yeah, so what I want you guys to do now is try and guess and predict what the heck the reducing agent that you guys will use to reduce your ketone and aldehyde down to an alcohol. And hopefully the second hint that Sorry, this second step here, which I've given you guys, will be a good hint to indicate what reducing agent you'll use. I have H3O+, which is basically acid, or HCl and H2O. Sometimes it's um, sometimes H3O+ is represented this way. It's the same, but the bottom line is you're going to need some acid at the end of this reducing reaction to quench your reducing agent and get you your alcohols. Okay. So yeah, take a second, please, and to hit pause and try this out. I want you to get the reducing agent and get the, the structure of the alcohol that we get from this reaction. All right? OK, and come back in a couple seconds. Hit pause. OK, one last thing. Sorry, I forgot about this, guys. The reason why I included alkene here is because I want you guys to choose the reducing agent that will target only the carbonyl when you do the reduction, OK? Because there's actually another reducing agent that will take out both the alkene and the carbonyl and reduce them both down. But once again, I only want you to choose the reducing agent that will target the carbonyl, OK? And this will, once again, be the hint to help you guys out. All right, so hit pause and try it out. OK, so ta-da! Did you guys get um, sodium borohydride, also known as um, NaBH4, OK? So this is the reducing agent that you're going to have to use if you want to reduce a ketone or aldehyde down to a alcohol, OK? Now, you can also use lithium aluminum hydride, which you typically learn a little bit later. That's normally used for carboxylic acids because it's a little bit stronger. And I'm planning on making a video on that in, a, in the future, so you can always check that out. But yeah, NaBH4. And the reason why it has to be NaBH4 or, or LiAlH4, lithium aluminum hydride, is because those two conserve the alkenes. The alkenes stay alkenes. They don't get reduced down. 
And for the um, ketone example, right, notice how we get a secondary alcohol, and for the aldehyde example, we get a primary alcohol. Well, that's because the ketone, right, it's this carbon over here is already bound to two carbons. It can only get one more hydrogen, which it does. And that's why, um, yeah, so it does. And then the carbon that's bound to the OH, it's bound to two carbon chains. So that's why it's secondary. The primary, sorry, the aldehyde, right, that generates the primary alcohol, it can get one more hydrogen right here. And that's what happens. And that's why, and sorry, and the carbon that's bound to the OH group is, is, um, is bound to only one carbon chain. So that's why you get a primary alcohol, OK? And you need acid to quench the reaction because NaBH4, sodium borohydride, it's, um, it's basic. And, if, and yeah, you just need the acid to quench the reaction to, um, yeah. I'll explain more in my mechanism video for sodium borohydride. So don't worry too much about that. And last thing is, let's say if you guys have a really, really bad day, You just really didn't even want to work with ketones or aldehydes, and you don't even want to work with um, alcohols either. Then you could do another reaction called the Wolf Kishner reduction or the Clemenson reduction. They are similar, and you can reduce a ketone and aldehyde just straight down to a carbon chain, just like this. All right, so this is what I meant. You can do an even stronger reduction called the Wolf Kishner reduction or the Clemenson reduction. All right, um, the Wolf Kishner reduction is a basic is done in basic conditions as you can tell by the KOH, potassium hydroxide, and the Clemenson reduction is done in an, S, in an acidic condition due to the HCl. The wolf kishner reduction uses a nitrogen compound, and the Clemenson reduction uses zinc mercury metal. So they can basically turn your ketone or aldehyde into just carbon chains. They, they're, this reduction is even stronger than the sodium borohydride reduction that we did before, all right? So yeah, the Clemenson reduction actually didn't really come up much at all when I took orgo, so it really depends on your professor. So for when I, when I took orgo, I mainly just used the sodium borohydride, re borohydride reduction and the Wolf-Kishner reduction. Okay, so that's basically it for the reduction of ketones and aldehydes with sodium borohydride or the Wolf-Kishner. Okay, um, this is just a quick kind of like overview of the reductions. If you guys want to see a more in-depth analysis of it in my mechanism videos, make sure you guys check those out. Um, I'll be trying to make them as soon as I can. Uh, when they come out, I'll update you guys on Facebook and Twitter as usual. Um, if you guys like this video, as always, make sure you like it down there and tell your friends. Uh, since if you're waiting on my mechanism videos, then just get subscribed right now and I will see you guys in another video then. Okay? See ya! Oops! <laughs> what? Oh my god! <laughs> What? <laughs> Do every single one. <laughs>